everyone, my name is Cohen Jones, and happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Mattern, and I'm going to read a book that I wrote called Disgusting Plants. Um, all of the book is not about carnivorous plants, but some of the plants are carnivorous, so I'm happy to share it with you. And this book is published by uh, Kaleidoscope, and you can check out more of their books at their website, www.kscopebooks.com. All right, let's get started. Chapter one, putrid plants. Ah, the sweet smell of flowers. Some flowers smell really nice, but others are absolutely disgusting. Take a sniff of the Rafflesia flower. On second thought, don't. The flower doesn't smell sweet. Instead, it smells like rotting meat. A Rafflesia might smell gross, but that smell helps it survive. The rotting smell attracts flies. When those flies land on the flower, bits of pollen stick to their bodies. Then the flies go to another flower and spread the pollen around. This allows the flowers to reproduce. Rafflesias smell gross, but they look kind of pretty. These flowers are puffy, red, and covered with polka dots. They are also huge. The Rafflesia is the largest flower in the world. It can measure up to three feet one meter across and weigh up to 15 pounds, seven kilograms. Rafflesias grow in rainforests in Asia. These flowers are very rare. That's probably a good thing or the whole forest would stink. Fun fact, Rafflesias are often called corpse flowers because they smell like dead bodies. The Rafflesia is not the only flower with a disgusting smell. Dracula's flower is another. This flower got its name because it has a black spike surrounded by purple or blood red petals. This makes the flower look like Dracula's cape. Like the Rafflesia, Dracula's flower smells like rotting meat. This attracts flies. They help pollinate the plant. Fun fact, Dracula's flower is also called the stink lily, the snake lily, and the voodoo lily. Right. Chapter two, drop in and die. Most plants get nutrients from the soil, but what's a plant to do if it grows in soil that doesn't have any nutrients? Then it has to hunt for its dinner. The leaves of the pitcher plant are shaped like a long vase or a pitcher. They may look pretty, but they are a death trap to insects. The edges of the leaves are covered with sticky nectar. If an insect lands on the nectar, it quickly becomes trapped and falls into the pitcher-shaped leaves. What's inside those leaves? Water and digestive juices. The sides of the pitcher are too slippery for the insect to escape. The insect drowns and is digested by the plant. Pitcher plants grow in tropical areas. Many grow in Indonesia. Some kinds grow in the southern and eastern parts of the United States, and some in South America. Even though pitcher plants are deadly to many insects, other insects call this plant home. Spiders live inside the plant and eat insects that get trapped inside. Frogs do this too. It just goes to show that even disgusting, scary places can be a good home. Fun fact, pitcher plants don't only eat insects. They also eat small animals. Mice and birds sometimes fall inside the plant and die. Pitcher plants aren't the only plants that like to catch insects. Say hello to the sundew. In spite of its happy name, it is a real death trap for the careless. Sundews live in wet places with poor soil. To get enough food, the sundew captures insects. An insect lands on leaves covered in what looks like harmless dew. There it gets trapped on drops of sticky nectar. The leaves grab the insect and force it into digestive juices inside the plant. Deadly house plants. Sundews grow in swamps all over the world. They can also grow in your home. These flowers are popular house plants. They are good at catching flies and other pesky insects. Chapter three, a deadly trap. Pitcher plants and sundews have a taste for meat. The Venus flytrap is another plant that thinks meat is a tasty food. 
The leaves of the Venus flytrap have hinged lobes on the ends. These lobes are covered with trigger hairs. When an insect or a small frog touches these hairs, they snap shut. The animal is trapped inside, but that's only the beginning of the horror. Inside the closed leaves, the plant digests the insect. It takes about 10 days for the prey to be digested. Once the insect is gone, the leaves open up. It's time for a new victim. Venus flytraps only grow in North and South Carolina. They grow in places with poor soil. The insects provide nutrients the plant can't get from the soil. Many people keep Venus flytraps at home. Some think that since the plant is a carnivore, it will eat meat, so they feed it bits of hamburger. However, this can make the plant sick and even kill it. Only insects and small animals are good for this plant to eat. Sadly, the Venus flytrap is endangered in the wild. 93% of these plants have died in the past 40 years. A Venus flytrap has just one problem. Its traps work only about six times, then they turn brown and fall off. But don't worry, the plant can always produce new traps. A Venus flytrap can live more than 20 years in the wild. It blooms year after year. That means a lot of insects meet their end in this plant's deadly grasp. Fun fact, Venus flytraps cannot digest an insect's exoskeleton. They spit out this part of the body after they digest the rest. Chapter four, squeezing the life out of you. Strangler figs are not just disgusting, they are also rude. These trees use other trees as hosts and things do not go well for the poor host trees. Strangler figs start as seeds, but these seeds don't grow in the ground. Instead, a monkey or another animal drops a seed high in the top of a tree. The fig grows long roots. These roots grow down the host tree until they reach the ground. Then they grow around the tree. In time, the fig's roots wrap completely around the host. That's not good for the host. It usually dies. The roots strangle the tree, and the leaves of the strangler fig are also up to no good. These leaves grow so thick that they block out the sun. Without the sun, the host tree cannot survive. The strangler fig's roots can spread out as far as 30 feet, 9 meters, below the ground. They steal nutrients from the host tree. So the host not only gets strangled, it also starves. Strangler figs grow fast. Their roots can grow up to 15 feet, 5 meters, per year. It can take several years for the roots to reach the ground. Strangler figs can grow up to 148, 45 meters high. Not everything about strangler figs is bad. When a fig kills a tree, it leaves a big hollow space inside the roots and trunk. Animals such as bats, birds, and other creatures live there. These hollow spaces are a safe place to hide. Fun fact, strangler figs grow in the rainforests of South America and Asia. Strangler figs also provide food to animals in the rainforest, and the fig's stem and roots can help support the host during bad storms. So even though it's not great for the host tree to meet up with a strangler fig, this tree does some good. Thanks everyone and happy Carnivorous Plants Day. Thank you, Miss Mattern, for reading your book discussing plants. That was wonderful. To learn more about her and to purchase one of her books, or to learn more about the International Carnivorous Plant Society, check out the links below.